what would you have said to them then? Before we get where we are, their argument is that actually you're more likely to get variants and they're unvaccinated. Why isn't that the case? <laughs> well, it's, it's uh, as uh, Shagaro was saying, uh, when you put immune pressure, uh, you are going to make a selection in the different mutants. As you were saying, you will be selecting the mutants that are able of overcoming that pressure. So basically, you are selecting in this case, because we are vaccinating against spike protein, spike protein, which is responsible for the infectiousness of the virus. So we are putting suboptimal pressure on viral infectiousness. And that means that you will be selecting viruses that are more variants that are more infectious. <clears throat> Those will be all, will be able to overcome that pressure on infectiousness. So it's the selectivity of the immune pressure that that matters. It's not it's not that much you know. So there is a screen. So 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 the vaccines are screening. They are in fact a breeding ground for the more infectious variants. And of course, as Shankara was saying. If those become then dominant in the population because they are thriving, you will automatically increase the infection rate in the population. That is different from a situation in the unvaccinated that, of course, do not have this selection pressure. And basically, every variant could theoretically uh, multiply and replicate in an unvaccinated person. The unvaccinated person is also uh primarily building uh resistant to this by training its uh, its natural immunity its innate immunity so it's it's not a matter this has always been a complete misunderstanding people were looking who is shedding more eh? is, is is the unvaccinated or or, or the vaccinated etc so it's always this fundamental problem in immunology that people think, and even virology, or the more, eh, when it is about immunology, the more, the better. If it is about virology, the more eh, vi virus shed, the worse, for example. And I've always said, no, what matters is the type of immune defense that you are building in terms of individual health and in terms of public health what matters is the type of immune pressure you are putting on the virus. So the unvaccinated are not putting immune pressure on the virus, but the vaccinees are putting immune pressure, which basically explains where we had, why we had, in fact, this dominant propagation of more and more infectious variants. That is what is uh, what what completely changed the pandemic into, in fact, a pandemic of more infectious variants. That was not the case in the, fact, in the unvaccinated. And, you know, we have to realize we are all part of the population. So if something goes wrong with the public health uh, aspect, then we as members of the population are all affected. And that is why also the unvaccinated have ultimately been affected by the high infection rate in the, in the population. Yeah, it, it, this is complex. What, what, I mean, I'm trying to see if I can get the balance here. So I'm, I'm standing in the middle, as I said, I'm advocating for the other side. And at the time when there was a push for getting a vaccine, there wasn't a lot of pushback that they were doing the wrong thing. This is in 2020. The first pushback probably came in 2021 when, when Gert spoke out and so on and i'm trying to understand why or how could they have done this differently we are in the middle of a pandemic we needed a fast solution to get the world back in order uh, thoughts shankara i think philip when you look at uh, public health intervention it's always been to treat the sick first uh and that's what we that's what we failed to do uh, we we uh, didn't recognize the importance of natural immunity. We didn't quantify it. Uh, from a from a perspective from South Africa, we started our vaccination campaign pretty late. Uh, so when we had the first wave, 
Uh, yes, uh, I treated patients. We managed to curb the mortality and morbidity. But none of the patients that were infected in the first wave got reinfected in the second. And none of the patients in the second wave got reinfected in the third. But once we start, and, and that showed that they are, were developing robust immunity, and it was, uh, it was robust enough to protect them against the emerging variants. Uh, so they had this broad spectrum of natural immunity. And then we got to the vaccination campaign. And people started taking the vaccine. Uh, the vac and we noticed that uh, at the start of Omicron, almost 70% of the patients that I was seeing were fully vaccinated patients. And so uh, I think that the, the, the mistake we made was not doing this in a pragmatic way. First, addressing the illness, the sick, uh, rather than addressing the healthy. Uh, we should have treated all the sick patients first and uh, did uh, uh, IgE, I'm sorry, uh, uh, IgG levels on them and make sure that they're developing robust immunity and then considered whether we actually need to intervene with the vaccine because the vaccine is going to alter the immunity on a population base, uh, on a population level, and that could cause a change in the virus itself. So I think the mistake was that we focused on the vaccine uh, for a population-based immunity rather than looking at the sick and understanding the immunity they develop naturally from viral infection.